You know, this pandemic, when it was declared in March, it put so many future plans on hold. Not since the Great Depression have so many young adult children, ages, say, 18 to 29, lived under the same roof with their parents. That can create anxiety, it can create fear of the future, and also stress. And joining me to talk about all of this, and who knows where else this conversation will go, is Dr. Rachel Glick. You never know. Good morning, doctor. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you know, many young people were looking forward to, uh, you know, if they were just finishing up college, getting into the workforce, and then suddenly all these jobs were put on hold. And, you know, that just kind of creates a fear of the future. Yes, and it creates a lot of family tension. It can. For some, they're enjoying the, you know, renewed opportunity to extend child rearing and have their children back at home. But for many, it creates a lot of tension. And for the, but they feel a lot of teens feel like, or young adults feel like they're back in adolescence. Mm -hmm. So it, it, they feel trapped and irritable and um, confused about what the roles are now. And while none of us have ever had to deal with a pandemic before. Um, not since 1918, you know, maybe our grandparents or great grandparents, but I think older folks are a little more equipped to maybe pass something on to the younger people to say, hey, you know, kind of this, this is not going to last forever. What are some of those tips you have? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I always like with parenting to balance a combination of love and understanding and compassion and listening mm -hmm. with accountability, responsibility, um, and, you know, kind of cause and effect. So it's always kind of important to listen within as a parent. Is this what's needed now is for them to be, so I need to listen to them? Or is it time where maybe we need to negotiate something that they contribute a little bit more to the house that might help empower them? So, um, please. Hello? Are you oh, there, doctor? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Sorry about that. Yeah. So I think that in some ways you want to really be understanding that what they're going through is, a le is experiences of grief and um, often like frustration and to be really compassionate with how they're feeling and not try to fix it and not try to, you know, push them through it too quickly. And then at the same time, to help empower them and help them feel part of the family, to try to connect in, in the most positive way possible. Also to give some sort of um, opportunity for them to see that they actually make a difference in the home and negotiate how they're going to share responsibilities on some level. That is excellent advice. You know, I, as, a, as a man, I, I, I tend to always want to fix things. You know, I think men mm -hmm. are like that. They want to fix it. And, and to just sit back and listen and don't interrupt and say, you know, hey, mm -hmm. I, can, I can fix that right away. Just listen to them. And just by lending your ear, that can solve a lot of things. Absolutely. And it can be helpful to ask open-ended questions, like what are your plans what is it that you feel like is the best thing for you? Empower them to look within for what they think they should do. Mm -hmm. It helps them know that we believe in them, but it also um, is, a, is a good way of listening, but also sort of guiding them to some, you know, proactive solutions is to ask them kind of what they think is best for them. All right. And like a marriage, choose your words carefully. You can't take back Absolutely. words. Absolutely. All right. So if yes. you, want to, you want to further discuss this issue with Dr. Glick, we do have a link and it's on our Fox 2 website and also our mobile app. Thank you so much, Doc. Oh, my pleasure. Take good care. You too. Be bye safe. Bye-bye. All right. It is